Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial where we're going to deploy a Flask app to AWS Lambda. And it's actually a very simple and easy way, and it's also very cheap because it actually provides 1 million free requests per month. And AWS API Gateway also provides, I think, 1 million free requests per month. So if you want to get started with deploying your, your Flask app, you can actually get started with AWS Lambda, and it's very um, very simple and very cheap as well. So first things first, obviously, you need your AWS account. So go, get, go ahead and get started with creating that. And afterwards, you want to um, install our AWS CLI. Uh, command line interface. So just go ahead and uh, you can actually use Python to install it. So you can pip3 install AWS CLI here. So we just want to make sure that you actually install it on the right Python interpreter. So it's just going to sidetrack a bit. So let's go to our VS code and go to this control shift P and just click select interpreter and just check the Python version that you're using. And after you're done so just go ahead and search for your Python here. So I'm using Python 3.13. So open file location open file location again and just copy this open up your command prompt and change directory into this and then cd into scripts again and then here is where you actually pip install properly so just, just go ahead and pip install uh, AWS CLI here just copy and paste that and it, uh, since I already installed it it should show all these requirements have been satisfied and after you've done so we can actually run uh, AWS uh, version you should be able to see that it's properly installed. I'm using version 1 here. It doesn't really matter because we just want it to configure our AWS credentials. And now we actually want to configure our credentials so that locally we actually store some credentials for our deployment. So it actually knows where to actually deploy. So just run AWS configure. And you will ask for your access key ID. So to get this access key ID, just go to your, just click your name here. And then click on security credentials. And then you should see access keys here and just go ahead and create access key if you have already have two here uh, you won't be able to create more so uh, either de delete or you just use whatever access key that you created so just go ahead and create access key understand just copy this access key here and then copy your secret access key which is copy uh, which is this here uh, Default region name, I'll just be using US East one. I've uh, been used to that, so it's just up to you which one to, uh, you want to use. So, for demonstration, I'm just going to use uh, North Virginia. Output format, we just leave it as none. And there you go. So, your credentials should be created. Just if you want to check, all you have to do is go to your app data, for example. Just click on your name, and you see an AWS folder here, and you see two files here. Config, which should store your region. And your credentials, which should store your secret uh, access key ID and secret access key. Yeah. Okay. So now we're actually done with your AWS configuration. We can actually get started with the code itself. So let's just go back to our folder here where we selected our Python interpreter. So we're just going to start from scratch. First things first, we want to make sure we have um, two modules that it's important. So go back to your uh, CMD that we CD inside the scripts here, and just make sure you install. Zappa. Zappa is what is the is the module that's going to help us to deploy our Flask app very easily. And we also want to install. Um, I'm assuming you you have already done this because we're going to create a Flask app. So just make sure you pip install Flask as well. So let's just get started with our, our simple Flask app. So we're just going to import our Flask and j 25 and request just some commonly used ones. And we're going to create our Flask app. And let's just create a very simple route. Just is going to create our main page for this index. And for methods, we're just going to use uh, get. Uh, I'm just going to return j 25 message. It says hello lambda world. Okay, and it's gonna create another method just for demonstration. Let's just call it get and let's just have it a post method. It says hello lambda, which is hello get. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, make sure it doesn't have a duplicate method there. And then we just wanna run it locally first just to demonstrate that it works. So you want to run Flask app. Of course, Flask is a server, so you have to run it in a loop. So just app.run. 
that's the true host. I just want to run it on the port 5000. Okay, so let's just go ahead and run the Python. Okay, so this will be our main endpoint, which is obviously just local. Um, so we can't, we won't be able to give this public endpoint to anyone else. So I just want to make sure that the Flask app just works. So just go ahead and just uh, test it on Postman. Let's just get a get call. And great, we see message uh, lambda will in a JSON format. And if you run post, you should say method not allowed. We should use the and proper endpoint slash get. It says hello get. If you use get, it should not allow it as well because we only allow post. Yep. Okay, so our Flask app works locally so now we want to actually deploy this to lambda and let's see how that works okay so now we actually want to deploy our app to flask lambda so first things first we want to actually create a requirements text file and the reason why we do this is we actually want to create we're going to deploy from virtual environment and this virtual environment has to install all these necessary packages that actually allow our flask app to work in the first place if not when we push this um, push this uh, our app it actually does not have these packages installed and it's actually going to raise an error so just put the packages that you need here. So importantly, we need Flask and Zappa. And if you have open AI or whatever like this, then you just want to make sure you put it here. And yeah, so just put whatever uh, packages that's required here. And after you're done with that, we're going to create our virtual environment. That we're going to actually deploy from. So Python main B. And once you're done with that, uh, just go ahead and activate your uh, virtual environment so when we backslash scripts and just activate it and now you should enter your virtual environment and now you want to actually install our packages so just pip install recursively and requirements the text as you see that it's installing okay and now you actually want to get started with our deployment so just just run zappa initialize and you should actually create a configuration file so what kind of environment just call it dev uh, what do you want to call your bucket? Just leave it as default. And what's your app function? Default is app.app. .app. app is referring to the file name, your app.py. And this app is referring to your Flask app itself. So this is what Zappa is looking for, which um, a web service a gateway interface to actually run. And we're going to here is going to be a Flask app. So default is app.app. .app. Great. Would you like to deploy this application globally? No, we're just going to deploy it to US East 1. And we're gonna run through it later, so just put yes first. Okay, so first things, we're gonna just run through this. App dot function is, uh, sorry, app underscore function is referring to your app dot app, where app is your file name, and this app is referring to your Flask app itself. The reason why this is very important is because Lambda functions itself requires a Lambda handler. It's very simple. So Lambda functions just has a simple Lambda handler, which takes in the event and the context. However, in a, it, it, it won't be able to run a Flask app just by a simple handler. So what Zappa does is it, it abstracts this handler away. So this handler will have a gateway to this Flask app itself. So it does a lot of stuff under the hood, and hence it's very useful for us to just use Zappa to deploy a Flask app instead of configuring it all ourselves. So yeah, so just make sure you actually link to your oops, link to your app dot uh, Flask app properly here. So AWS region, we will just refer to US East 1 that we configured in our AWS CLI earlier. And exclude here, exclude is very important because we don't want to bloat our Lambda function with many files that is not needed. So in this case, we have this default stuff that is added. It's just stuff that AWS already recognizes. It doesn't need it to be deployed together with it. Uh, if you have extra folders like uh, extra stuff, then make sure you actually include this thing in your exclude. So that it will actually bloat your AWS Lambda to be too big. If it's too big, uh, I actually had a lot of issues deploying as well. So profile name, that's uh, just default, project name, runtime, and S3 bucket. Just to remove any issues, just remove this line. Sometimes get issues with that. So just remove that line for now. And just save it. Uh, that was just my formatting, nothing changed. So just make sure you remove S3 bucket line there. And now we can actually go ahead and deploy our Lambda. So just run Zappa deploy dev. And you'll we'll see how it goes. So it's very simple. All you have to do is Zappa initialize and now Zappa deploy. And now you actually deploy our Lambda functions very easily. So let's just see how it goes. Okay, now it's done with the deployment of the Lambda. 
but now it also needs an API gateway, something that actually connects our Lambda functions to a public endpoint that people actually get called. So great deployment is complete. And now you have this endpoint, which is the most important because this is where you're able to make your API calls. Now before we actually demonstrate, let's just go ahead and see what is created on our AWS uh, itself, just to get an idea of what's going on. So go back to your AWS portal and open up Lambda. Uh, just ignore the rest here, just uh, look at why it's last modified here and this is our YouTube AWS uh, demonstration dev. That's our Lambda, the function that we created. And okay, so you can notice all the files here is basically what we created here. Your app.py, which is your Flask app that you created here. So it's all been deployed properly. So the next one is API Gateway. So just open up API Gateway. So this is the endpoint that's created for us to actually call. So again, just look at what's been created latest. Open it up and just go and click stages here and now you see this invoke URL so this is what the URL that we'll be calling and when you call this look at resources here uh, just click on any and you'll see this lambda integration here so once you receive the uh, call the API call uh, this lambda is then integrated to our function that you created here so when you click on this it just goes back to the function that was created here so it's very simple you call this API this API gateway then calls this lambda function which then under the hood calls your uh, uh, appropriate Flask API that you need. So let's actually go ahead and demonstrate that. So go to your VS Code, copy and paste this endpoint, and let's just go ahead and run a get, uh, not run, but send a get call to here. There we go. Voila, and you get a message hello lambda world. And this is actually a public endpoint, so anyone can actually call this uh, and actually get this hello lambda world. And if I wanted to test this um, get here, oh, sorry, slash, uh, leave that slash uh, dev and just put get there and I have a post call and you get hello get. So if I run a get call there, it says method not allowed. So it's just pretty much the same flask get, but now it's actually with a public endpoint. So, so that's pretty much. The entire flow is very simple. You just need a Flask app. All you have to do is just set up SAPA in a virtual environment and your AWS configuration. And now you have a public endpoint that uh, anyone can actually call. So when you deploy it to AWS, we have the AWS Lambda for a very cheap um, way. Uh, there is a problem with this because it is public. So anyone now who's watched this video can probably call it if I did not revoke the, or undeploy it. So what there are stuff that you can actually add, such as authorizer. So what this authorizer does, it basically whatever endpoint it receives, it will then authorize it, make sure it's actually uh, what we is from a proper user, and if it's proper user then it goes to the Lambda function. We will show this in another video, but for now, uh, thanks for watching and hope you had, hope you learned something.